Hey everyone, World Film Geek here, and I'm interviewing Nathan Phillips. Many will know him from the film Snakes on a Plane, where he played the witness, Eddie. He also has done other films such as Warriors of Virtue 2 and Redline, among others. His latest film, Three Day Weekend, is coming to Amazon Prime tomorrow. Enjoy the interview. Hey. There you go. Hello. Oh, wow. You just blew my eardrums off. <laughs> I had to go on speaker. That's why. I'm on speaker. You're on speaker. Yeah, I put. Yeah, I got you guys on speaker. I'm gonna turn you right now. All right, I'm going on you guys. Have a nice interview. All right. Thank you. Hey Nathan, how you doing? Good, thanks, Mike. I'm gl I'm glad to be talking. I'm glad to be talking to you. I am a huge fan of yours, believe it or not. So, I saw Three Day Weekend, and I was blown away with what I saw. The whole movie was brilliant. It, I felt like I was watching like a, like a puzzle Rashomon type thing, and it worked out really well. <laughs> so, how did you get? So, my first question is: How did you get involved in the role in the role of a Schnapsy? Well, Phil Harder, um, who it was a dear, dear friend of mine. Um, he's a he was a music producer and like friend of 15, 20 years of me living in back and forth in Venice Beach, California, and uh, he's friends with White and Megan and. He, he um, set us up just to have a meeting. And when um, Wyatt told me he was a Capricorn and that I'd be filming, oh, that's me having a laugh because yeah. I'm a Capricorn too. <laughs> that's all. But um, no, I just love the concept. We had a coffee. We have a lot of similar beliefs. We love baking. We love cooking. We love food. We love books. We love film. Um, his wife, who's his producing partner, Megan, um, was delightful and very charming. And... Um, you know, I love a small kind of intimate little film, like it, like kind of similar to some very successful films I've made in the past. So I, I figured the alchemy was possibly there to make gold. And uh, I've always wanted to um, see Minnesota. Um, so it was a great opportunity to get out there. And it was just a no-brainer, you know, just to be able to live on a lake and, and fish and um, pretty much uh, have um, hot baths and, you know... Um, steam rooms on the on the lakes it was so enticing and then uh yeah morgan krantz and maya and uh, scotty i mean that was just a good good mix of people and i love i love morgan he's kind of like he's like our he's got i kind of found him like a mr bean meets peter sellers <laughs> like Rowan Atkinson. yeah and i think if he could comedy it would work you know you'd really yeah now that i can see it I, just, I do see that i do see that resemblance that's like perfect yeah, if you put him in a turtleneck, he's <laughs> it doesn't all work for him. We did him a bad do it. Be funny. <laughs> so I got to talk. Um, so yeah, yeah. And Maya, you know. Oh yeah, Maya's amazing. I got to talk to her just a couple of days ago, and she she praised you so much and how well you two work together. Yeah, well, we lived together too, so it was great. We were like one big family. So, um, what would you say was one of the most was probably the most difficult thing about shooting the film. Just that the director knew what he was doing. Because <laughs> <laughs> the script, I mean, I, I read the script and I still was confused, you know what I mean? And it, it's one thing to have a blueprint, but it's it's another, like it's one thing to have a treasure map, but you got to make sure there's an X somewhere. You know, there is, there is treasure. Mm -hmm. um, and he was promising me, he was promising me that, you know, that would make sense. So, I just had to trust him in that way because uh, there were so many elements. My head was uh, like I was confused because with the text messaging and the t the time, the, the narrative temporality being, you know, and then the different protagonists' uh, uh, perspectives, then you know, giving us the information um, at, at different in a different you know um, in different acts, if you will. Yeah. But with the narrative temp temporality being much distorted and no dialogue. I mean, it was just a fun, exciting. Uh, if anything, it was just going to be a 
a good exercise in something that I thought was a pretty cool idea and different. And, um, yeah, I mean, it kind of worked. And then how he kind of made Scott this really weird character and snaps, you know, Schnopsy was just this really confused, you know, drug addicted, you know, PTSD ex soldier. I mean, mm-hmm. and you didn't really get to know the character. You, you, it was interesting in that exercise, like, not worried about. I've always played characters where you, you know, the redeemable heroes, they were there. Um, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, but in this, I was just basically that, and you don't really get to know anything other than they want to find the fucking money. Um, yep. so yeah, it was a very fun, very fun exercise, and I'm just glad that it actually had cut together and he's made another film, and people seem to be receiving a well that love a you know, yep. kind of off beat. Yeah, I, I, I felt it was, um, I felt it was inspired by the likes of like Kurosawa or. You know, like hero, like Rashomon and Hero, because you have like oh. the one perspective, yeah. and you have the other, and then, but that I'll, I'll tell you, I'm not spoiling it, but the way that movie ended, my mouth almost literally dropped to the floor. I was really shocked at the whole thing. Yeah. That's what I love. Yep, yep, and that's what why in the end it was like you know what I mean. Yeah, he he, I, he did an excellent job. He need he. He should definitely do more films like this because th- this is like amazing. Yeah, it was re- refreshing, wasn't it? That's yeah, what I thought. Um, but like I said, it was it was very. Uh, it was a long time coming for me because I had to wait wait to see if it actually did cut together. If the story was, if it did actually, yeah, the pieces did all fit, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and um, and for me, for in my opinion, this was one of your best films. I mean, I've seen you in. Uh, Snakes on a Plane, Red Line. I've even seen you in Warriors yeah. of Virtue Part Two, and I just saw that just not too wow. long ago. And I, I was like, "Why don't I?" was like, "I recognize him," and I'm like, "Oh my god, that's Nathan Phillips from Snakes on a Plane!" Like you played the lead role in that, and you. But this was by far one of your best roles, hands down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done a lot, a lot of big, big uh, Australian films, and uh, you know, like these final hours. And- uh, mm-hmm. You know, Wolf Creek, Australian Rules. Yeah. Um, so I've done a lot of successful art house movies and um, you've horror done, movies, if you will. You, you've so, done it all. <laughs> but, um, I just, and right after this, because I was watching Megan and Wyatt, I produced my own movie called Blood Vessel and was lead actor in that. And that's doing really well on the horror circuit as well. That's awesome. Um, so check that out. Definitely. Um, so yeah, no, I've been, I've been lucky to do a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, I was just filming on the, I'm in Australia. And I was just, I'm living off the grid. I'm living on 90 acres in northern New South Wales. And I've got an 11-week-old blue healer. So I'm very busy at the moment with a puppy. Nice. As a single dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, it's still, you know, it's nice to be working in really weird times. And it's great that, um, you know, because Phil Harder's movie that he, the, the guy that directed me to Wyatt and Megan, mm-hmm. um, he's a Minnesota native. He uh, also made a great movie called Tuscaloosa that I did a small part in for him off the back of... Uh, of three day weekend, so sort of yeah, it was like really, really a uh, a very fun, creative, worthwhile uh, experience, and I had as much uh, fun and uh, pleasant uh, surprises uh, while I was filming on location, and then while filming, you know, working with really talented actors, really and really nice, humble people like mm-hmm. Wyatt and the crew. I mean, Minnesota Minnesotians are just really, you know, nice people. I find uh, yeah. I've got a few really good mates from Venice Beach who are from Minnesota and Nebraska and places. And, uh, yeah, it was just really lovely to see a hardworking crew and it was really intimate. I mean, everyone was on location and, um, yeah, and I, I, and I love cooking. So me, Wyatt, you know, he makes the best. I, mean, I, I knew if he could bake an apple pie the way he did with cheese, which was the most, that was weirder than the film. <laughs> apple pie with cheese. With what? That's a, f- it bloody worked. Yeah, that's a first. I never heard that either. Yeah, it's a real Scandinavian thing that they do in Minnesota. So, I mean, if Wyatt can bake a bloody great pie and make great um, cocktails, I'm thinking the man can make a good movie. So, oh, yeah. I'm just really happy for him, and I do hope he get, and his beautiful wife get to make more movies. And yeah, just you know, it's nice to do something different. That's um, awesome. It's refreshing. Yeah, Ma- I think Maya said when I talked to her, she said the most difficult thing for her was she had to wear the same clothes for like a full month, like throughout the whole shoot. So, <laughs> so that's what she told me, and I, I, I thought that was kind of funny, and you know, 
and um, she's like, yeah, it was just it was from summer to like the beginning of fall. And I'm like, I started laughing because it reminded me of um, Gunnar Hansen going through the same thing in Texas Chainsaw Massacre when he played Leatherface. He wore the same outfit throughout the whole blistering summer. So she said she was relieved when, oh, yeah. yeah. So she felt relieved when she got to change clothes <laughs> after all that shooting. I don't know if you had to go through that, but <laughs> yeah, but. I, I wasn't working as much as my own mom, so I got to do a lot more. Uh, yeah, I got to wear my own clothes a lot and do a lot of fishing and, like I said, uh, taking out a boat, houseboat, and yeah, yeah, a lot of hiking and stuff. So I was pretty lucky with my schedule. Nice. So finally, with film and TV production, I know you're off. You're currently off the grid, but are there any new projects that we can look forward to in the future? Um, yeah, well, well Blood Vessel has just been released streaming. Uh, Blood Vessel with Robert Taylor. Um, okay. Um, and myself and um, Alyssa Sutherland from Viking. So there's some really good Aussie actors in this little horror Nazis on a boat um, movie called Blood Vessel that okay. I produced as well. And uh, I've got uh, Tuscaloosa that's coming out. And um, yeah, obviously three day weekend. Um, yep. Yeah, that's streaming tomorrow. So yeah, that's yeah, that'll be out. Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's out tomorrow. And then, yeah, I'm just waiting to see what happens up this weird Corona time and. Next year, I'm kind of just taking the next few months to look after this puppy. Speaking yep. of, yep. Come on, pup. <laughs> she's a she's a hand ready. Um, so yeah, mate, I'm yeah, taking a few months off now just to really work the farm and grow my food and and raise a puppy. Awesome. <laughs> so three day weekend is coming out actually tomorrow on on Amazon Prime, and those who love a good puzzle type mystery will definitely want to check this one out. And like I said, Nathan, this was one of your best roles and. I hope you have fun in that farm next couple months, and I hope that puppy grows up to be a a wonderful, wonderful dog towards you. Thank you so much, my friend, and uh, yeah, thanks for supporting uh, film and just good show, and uh, yeah, all the best to, uh, to the crew and guys behind Three Day Weekend. All right, so everyone, check out Three Day Weekend. <laughs>